Hello chess family, it's me National Master, Jesse James, and today we're going over another game in Instructive Chess Miniatures, and of course you can't go over uh, Instructive Chess Miniatures without having Morphe in there. Morphe, one of my favorite players of that century. So yeah, let's go and take a look how Morphe just obliterates his opponent with some beautiful pins in this game. So this is going to be the pin game. Here we go, we start off with E4, Schultz going to be playing with white pieces, and of course Morphe responds with pawn to B5. F4, King's Gambit, let's have some fun. And Morphe messes up Schultz's fun and plays pawn the d5. A very nice move here. Uh, you know, White's like over here, come on, let's let's try to get the King's Gambit going. I know all my theory and everything. And of course, I love the way Morphe responds. Pawn the d5. I don't want to take a free pawn. I just want to get an equal game. And then you know what? Maybe I'll give you some of my material. You gotta be very original to beat Mr. Morphe over here. Alright, well, White went ahead and took on d5, and Morphe's like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. And instead of taking on f4, which is pretty common, he plays pawn to e4. Very nice move here. With this move right here, he's already stopping the knight from being developed here. The d5 pawn will most likely be one uh, regardless. Or maybe if you try to hold on to it with something like c4, I'll just play c6 here. And again, you're going to have to probably take here. And now black just has a very nice advantage. Very good pawn on e4. A backwards pawn here on d2. So you got to play this just right. Uh, this e4 pawn is stopping the knight from going to f3. Knight c3 gets played, makes sense, holding on to the d5 pawn, and also eyeing the c4 pawn. Of course, Mr. Morphe is going to develop his king side pieces first. Here we go. Knight f6. Pawn to d3. A very, very interesting move here. This is very, very much hopeful chess, in my opinion. Uh, you're hoping your opponent goes along with your plan, and whenever they don't, you're just like, ah, I don't know why I lost, because you're playing hope chess. Try not to play hope chess, guys. Um, here... A better move to play something like maybe something like bishop c4 or bishop b5 and just play your knight to e2 and maybe we can try and castle here um of course d3 the hope here is well you know my opponent will take i'll take back and i can bring my knight out and now i'm just up my extra pawn they can't take on d5 due to bishop b5 check yeah i should just have a very good game here i hope this happens of course mr morphe sees your i uh sees your plan and just stops it here he could continues with the, with the correct principles which is develop your pieces Develop with a pin, the first pin of the game, bishop b4 here. So now you can't even take on e4 because, well, knight takes e4 here. And again, black's ready to castle, and he's got c3 already being attacked twice. Oof, something went wrong here whenever you see black has more development. And you played the gambit line. Oh, gosh, something's definitely going wrong here. So bishop b4 got played. Bishop d2 looks like a good move here. You know, hey, I want to play bishop d2. I want to take on e4. Maybe even knight takes here. And again, I'll win my pawn. Original moves by Morphe. Nice idea here. Here, the only thing stopping us is this bishop right here, right? So, a nice deflection. Pawn to e3. Ugh, again, you have to waste time because this is something that you have to take. You can't do anything else. Uh, if you queen e2, that doesn't do anything. Uh, queen e2, I guess, to try and pin it and win it here, you can simply just go ahead and castle. Obviously, you can't take the pawn without losing your queen. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You will play bishop takes c3 first. Here, bishop takes c3. Rook e8. Bishop e5. And now, knight takes d5. Something's gone wrong here. f6 will get played. You probably won't lose your queen, but you will be losing some material here uh, regardless. Okay. So... Here he just goes ahead and takes on e3. You can see here, white is up a few extra pawns now, but with that being said, they're very much behind development. Morphe does not waste any time. Of course, he's going to go ahead and castle. Remember, castle before you start your kingside attacks, okay? Bishop d2. Hey, I want my bishop here, remember? And not wasting any time, bishop takes c3, removing the defender for e2 or e4. Pawn takes, and here we start the attack. What do you play here? Rook e8 checks. Nothing more natural natural to play right here. Of course, we don't want to bring our queen in because white is very much happy to trade off pieces here, especially the queens. So rook e8 check. And here this is already a hard choice for white. Bishop e2 gets played. All right. We have our, first, uh, our second pin of the game. Let's go ahead and do it. Pin it and win it. What do you play here? Develop with a threat. This is such a nice game because it's just so natural. And whenever you see people that play games that make it look so natural, you know it's a very strong player. Bishop g4, of course, putting pressure on the other bishop over here on e2. White tries to hold on to the pawn. Ugh, trying to hold on to another pawn here is just a terrible idea. 
Again, right now you need is development. You have plenty of, of, uh, of the money. You need to go ahead and put that in the bank, okay? You need to go ahead and start getting your king to safety. It's not extra money if, you're, if your king dies. Okay, let's see here. Um, a move that some people might ask about is knight to f3, but this is a terrible move. What do you play here? Simple chess. This is a pin. You just take it. And after pawn takes an f3, obviously we can't take because of the pin over here with the rook. You can see how great this pawn structure is. Yes, you are up quite a few extra pawns here, but uh, yeah, this is just going to be terrible for you. Uh, this bishop is definitely a bad bishop. This bishop's also a bad bishop. Um, if you do make it to the end game, you know I don't think you're, it's going to go well, even if you do have a few extra pawns in in the in this game. So he went ahead and played pawn c4, probably just as bad. And well, what's the next piece you want to move? It's the knight, right? We want to get the knight out. Uh, how do we develop this piece? Ah. Hopefully you found the best way to do this. I gave this idea earlier, so hopefully you use it yourself. You can play the knight to d7. Eh, I don't know where the knight's going next, right? Maybe c5 is good. I don't know. Uh, knight a6. Again, a knight on the rim is grim. Here you have to find the move. The knight wants to go to c6. Of course, if you play that right now, the pawn just takes. So here, pawn c6. Have them help you put the piece where you want it to, to be played. Pawn takes, of course. I mean, if you don't, then we'll take, right? And then we'll mess up your center. And you wasted a move with c4 already to try and defend the d5 pawn, so this is just not working out for you at all. So pawn takes, knight takes. Ugh, again, you're just in this pin, and you really can't make any progress. Again, the knight can't go to f3 without having to deal with this. And, well, we see the bishop on e2 is being pinned. With the knight takes on c6, do you see how we can add more pressure? Yep, if it was Morphe's turn here, you would go ahead and play knight to d4, putting pressure on the bishop. And this time it's going to be a win because we have one, two, three pieces attacking, and you've only got one, two defenders. Well, I mean, you can count the king, but your queen was one of the defenders here, which means you're going to be losing your queen. Not a very good trade for you. Here, uh, Shulton tries to get out of the pin and plays king to f1. All right, here we go. Now white has a threat here. We're out of the pin. We did lose the right to castle, but we're out of the pin. And you know what? We're threatening bishop takes on g4 now. And, well, you know, if you take on e2, well, that'd be great. At least you helped me develop my last piece. Maybe I'll play like h3, king g1, king h2, bring the rook over. They call this castling by hand. And, you know, I'll just try to weather the storm um, here. Well, this definitely would be good for white. But again, hope chess. I hope they... I hope he does this. I hope he's. I hope he doesn't see the best move here. Black to move. Can you find out how to make a new pin here? All right. Any ideas? Remember, when you're looking for force moves, look for checks, captures, and threats. Here, the beautiful move here is rook takes on e2. What? Well, of course we can't take with our queen because we'll lose it with the bishop, which means we only have one move, which is knight takes. But here we have a new pin. Before we were having absolute pins, I think this is the third pin of the game. Um, here we had the absolute pin, which is any time with a king. And this time we have a relative pin, which is against the queen. Relative pin is the second type of pin uh, in chess. Basically, it's any piece other than the king. All right, well, we got the pin on, the, on this knight for the queen. What do you do with pins? Add pressure. Pow, pieces on the pin piece, as the chess kids like to say. What do we do now? Knight d4, here we go. At this point, the game is already lost. You're going to be losing a piece, plus your king is just unsafe here. Right now, the threat is to win the queen here. What would you play here to win the queen? Of course, you would just play bishop takes on e2 check, forking the queen and the king. So, white went ahead and played queen to b1. Yes, you're going to win the piece, but I definitely don't want to lose my, my uh, queen for it. Bishop takes on e2 check. Remember, always look for the force moves. Here, king f2 got played, and Mr. Morphy plays this beautifully. It's pretty much forced checkmate for here. Don't worry, it's only eight moves. If you want to, you can try calculating it here. <laughs> of course, for, the, uh, for those of you who are just going to enjoy it because they know how tough that, that is, we'll just keep up with the game. I'll probably let you know whenever it gets to checkmate in about four, or, uh, probably three or four moves, which is pretty reasonable for most people. All right, well, remember, when you're looking for forced checkmates, always look for those checks. Here we go. Knight to g4 check, of course, very natural move, bringing in the knight, taking away squares. In fact, this king only has one good square to move to now. King to g1, and here is a move I really hope that you find. Please pause the video and try to find this idea. 
What's the idea? Well, we know that the king is already being surrounded, right? There's really no squares for it to move to. And if we can get the queen into the game, the game's going to be over very fast. So how do you get the queen into the game? Remember, it has to be checked to bring it in. All right, for those of you problem solving here, well, I, there's no way to bring the queen in. It's impossible, right? There's, I mean, I guess you could play queen b6, but that's not even check, and they'll just trade us. Hmm. Remember, always look for the checks here. Look for the diagonal. This was definitely the right idea, but there was a knight in the way. Ah, with the knight in the way, I give up. No, don't give up. Look for the idea. Clear and sacrifice. Knight of three check. You have to take because, well, the king can't move anywhere. So g takes on f3. Bring in that queen. Here she comes. Queen d4 check. King g2. Bring her in. Queen f2 check. King h3. Queen takes f3 check. King h4. And now it's checkmate in three. Doesn't matter what you do. We're going to get our checkmate. Here white is just not doing well at all, right? Uh, I mean, if you, if you have the king on the on the h file over here, it doesn't matter how much extra material that you have. It only matters about the ones that are active right here. Oh, can you find the move to force a checkmate in three? This is really cool. This is a, a hard move to find for most people because it has a piece going backwards. It's a psychological thing. People do not find moves that are going bump, uh, making moves backwards. Hopefully you found it. Knight h6, threatening the simple checkmate on g4. Of course, white needs to defend it. White went ahead and played queen g1. Makes sense. I'm, if I can trade off queens here, I should be able to uh, win this game. Of course, we're not going to let him. Checkmate in two here. Do you see it? The knight going to h6 was threatening. Knight f5 check. King to g5. And now checkmate in one. You can see this move, right? we got to attack the king, but make sure that you also are defending the knight because the king is attacking your knight. That should be the good hint here. Queen to h5, check and mate. Hope you enjoyed this game, the pin game by Morphe. We'll see you in the next one.